And they say, well, we have to follow our messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Here comes their shubahat. Man ra'a minkum munkaran fad yugayyirhu biyadihi. Whoever sees an evil thing, he has to change it with his hand. Whoever sees an evil thing, he has to change it with his hand. So we are changing the evil. We're speaking. Maybe we can't physically remove this leader, but he's evil, he's corrupt, and we're speaking against him. Because why? If you're not able to remove the evil with your hand, then remove it with your tongue. So we're speaking against evil. We remember. Let's go back. Let's rewind to our fifth class. We talked about a hadith that helps us understand we are not allowed to forbid an evil, a legitimate evil, if it leads to a bigger evil. What's the hadith? The Bedouin urinating in the masjid. A simple everyday herdsman. Right? Not the leader of the Muslims who has way more rights. The average everyday farmer. He comes in, he doesn't understand Islamic manners and he urinates in the masjid. You let him finish because interrupting him and taking him out of the masjid will spread the urine everywhere. It's a bigger evil than him urinating in one spot and having that be an isolated spot that can be cleaned up. It's already happening, so it's already there. You disturbing him now and interfering and trying to stop it will only make a mess. So if this is the right of the Muslim community as it relates to one single individual person, what about the stability of a country? If that's what it means to, you know, to protect the masjid properly and to not create an evil by forbidding an evil, create an evil that's far greater than the original evil. What is it going to be like when you say we will not be patient with such and such act of oppression that has happened in the society? So and so was fired from his job by the Muslim ruler and he was replaced. And everyone's upset about it. We're not taking this anymore. So what happens? You know, logically what happens? We demand from the Muslim ruler openly. We're out in the street standing there saying, give this man his job back. He's done nothing wrong. We're, you know, placing ourselves as those who police the police or those who police the rulers. And so the rulers, they announce everyone out of the streets and go back home. And we say, no, we're not tolerating this anymore. We're not going to be patient with this kind of oppression. Our jobs may, might be next and we don't tolerate this. And you stand up. What happens? Now the police force comes out. They come out with riot gear. What's going to happen now? Now there's a clash now between the citizens and the police, Muslims and Muslims. Now you'll see Egypt. You'll see this, the country become... It, just, it starts with a few clashes. Then when someone was killed in the clash, because they refused to listen to the police, and there was a clash then, and maybe a police officer got frustrated by the situation and exercised too much force, and a life is lost now. Now what... There's now 10 times, 100 times more people protesting and yelling. And now they're going to bring weapons because they fear for their lives. And now the police have to come with more force. Now they bring tanks. And what's going to happen with a society like this? Allahu Mustaan. Where is the... Okay, the little boy who wants to go to school. What's he told now? Stay home. Because these days right now, we're having confrontations. Don't go to, the, don't go to school. And he's told that indefinitely while this goes on and escalates. And he may never go to a school again in his life because of this. He may never see a hospital when he's sick because of this event. And the Muslims won't catch themselves and realize that this is the beginning of the end of a society right here. If we don't catch ourselves and everyone fall into their place. Allahu Musta'an. What's amazing is these politically motivated people will do these things and the scholars are actively telling them, stand down, you do not behave like this with your rulers. Fear Allah Ta'ala. Ask Allah Ta'ala for your right. This is not how we interact with our rulers. They do what they want to do. Bloodshed ensues. The society becomes totally corrupt. No system will remain in place now. As we've seen in some countries. Then they say, where are the scholars? Why haven't they said anything? The Khawarij come in, every group of innovation comes in to try to take positions of authority and so on. And they say, what? Where are the scholars? The scholars were there, and you were ignoring them. The scholars were there for you, trying to stop you from destroying yourselves. But you refused to listen to them. You called them political scholars. You said they're scholars for the rulers and scholars for dollars. That's what you said about them. Now, after all the fitna happens, 
and you only recognize it as being harm and corrupt as the fitna is going away, you didn't see it coming. The ones who saw it coming, the scholars with insight, they told you that's what's going to happen. And you didn't listen. Now you're living it, and you say, where are the scholars? Backwards in every way that you can be backwards. Wallahu al